In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about continued fractions. So, continued fractions. A continued fraction is a way of expressing a number as an integer plus a series of nested fractions. Continued fractions date back to around about 300 BC, around about the time of Euclid. Um, and they have many, many different applications, one of which involves the solution to Pell's equation, which I'd like to talk about in a later video. There are two types of continued fractions that I'd like to discuss, namely finite continued fractions and infinite continued fractions. Um, in this video I'll be discussing finite continued fractions, but to show you what I mean by nested fractions, it's perhaps best to start with a definition. So here's our definition. A finite continued fraction finite continued fraction has the form the form and we've got a0 plus 1 all over a1 plus 1 all over a2 plus 1 all over dot 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 plus 1 over an. And each of these a1, a2, a3 um, up to an are all positive integers. So a1 up to an are positive integers. They can't be 0. And a0 is a positive integer, but it is allowed to be 0. So a0 is natural or 0. And some people like to denote this in square brackets as uh, square bracket a0, a1, up to an. This is just fancy uh, shorthand notation for the continued fractions. And uh, some people like to use a semicolon in front of this first term to emphasize the fact that it's the first term, but it's not really necessary. So let's start with an example. Example. Let's try to find the value of the continued fraction 1, 2, 3, 2. So let's just write it out, because that's the best place to start. The continued fraction of 1, 2, 3, 2 looks like 1 plus 1 divided by 2, because that's our second term, plus 1 divided by our third term, that's 3, plus 1 divided by our last term, which is 2. Now, from this point, we can just simplify things. We know that 3 plus a half is 7 halves, so this becomes 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 7 over 2. But what's the reciprocal of a fraction? To find the reciprocal of a fraction, you just invert it. You just swap the numerator and the denominator. So 7 over 2 becomes 2 over 7 when we have 1 over that. So this becomes 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 2 sevenths. Now 2 is 14 over 7, and 14 over 7 plus 2 over 7 is 16 over 7. So this becomes 1 plus 1 over 16 over 7. And as before, 1 over 16 over 7 is just 7 over 16, because we're just flipping the fraction. So this becomes 1 plus 7 over 16, which is 23 over 16, if you care to check. Um, so that's our continued fraction. That's the value of the continued fraction, 1, 2, 3, 2. Okay, so let's have another example. Let's instead try to go the other way. Let's try to find the value, or let's try to find the continued fraction of 89 over 37. Okay, well, I know that 37 goes into 89 twice and leaves a remainder of 15. 2 times 37 is 74, remainder 15. So this is 2 plus 15 over 37. Now here's the trick. Using the same idea as above, 
I know that 15 over 37 is the same as 1 over 37 over 15. So this becomes 2 plus 1 over 37 over 15. And now here's, here's where the fun part starts. I know that 37 over 15 is to remain the 7 because 2 times 15 is 30 and I've got 7 left over. So this becomes 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 7 fifteenths. And now I use exactly the same trick that I did before. I can write 7 over 15 as 1 over 15 over 7. So let's do that. That's 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 15 over 7. So you've already got this sort of uh, nested fraction thing going on, even after just two or so terms. So what's 15 over 7? Well, 15 over 7 is to remain to 1, because 2 times 7 is 14, and I've got 1 left over. So this becomes 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 7. And this right here is where we stop, because as I showed in my definition, our last term should be of the form 1 over a n. And right here, our a n term is 7, and we've got 1 over 7 as our last term. So our continued fraction for 89 over 37 is 2, 2, 2, 7, and that's 89 over 37. It turns out that you can write all rational numbers in this way. Uh, that's actually why I said that a0 could be 0 at the start of this video. For instance, if you wanted the continued fraction representation of one third, you'd end up with 0 plus 1 over 3. That's why a0 can be 0. Okay, so that's the end of my video on finite continued fractions. In my next video, we'll look at infinite continued fractions and show that it's actually possible to find continued fractions for irrational numbers like the square root of 2 or even the cube root of 2. Okay, see you then.